Last night I was talking to a woman who doesn't go to this church and she said that she was out with some family. She's a believer, they are not believers. They go into a store that is a pagan store. And she's trying to think about, she's already said, I'm a believer. They know that this, they intentionally brought her to this pagan store and then insisted on purchasing a pagan item for her because she wanted to show them love. She didn't think about setting up the boundary. So what ends up happening is they told her choose between this item or this item. And she's like, I don't want either one of those items. And they forced their will upon her and said, well, I'm not, I'm not really buying it for you. I'm just seeing which one you like better. They ended up purchasing it for her and then saying, here, take it. And she was like, I've told you, I don't want this. Well, then an elder that was with them in the family said, just receive it. And she was like, I don't want to receive it. And they're like, it, just take it. You can do something with it later. And so she receives it. An odd thing happened. She immediately got a headache. <laughs> and she, by the time she called me, she was feeling oppressed. She was wondering how she should have uh, responded. Now, if we keep in mind the wages of sin is death, would she have gone out that morning and thought, oh, I'm going into a pagan store and I'm going to bring a pagan idol item home with me? Now, as we know, Jesus is all powerful. The issue is in crossing that line. For example, some people think, okay, it's not a big deal if, if you have um, a Buddha in your home if you're a Christian. Well, in my opinion, if my husband brings in an ex-girlfriend and puts her picture on the mantle, we have an issue. Not in that relationship anymore. The Bible is clear about the boundaries that we put up with the things of sin and what we accept in God. So with God, we have no boundaries with Him. No boundaries at all with God. With sin, we have every boundary. We do not partake of sin at all. But then we have this thing where um, people come in or we are drawn away by our own lust and we cross those lines. And before long, we didn't t intend to do it, but we've made decisions that have brought us into it. Well, let me tell you for her, um, what she could have done, first of all, was not have entered that place and said, thank you for wanting to take me someplace, but I cannot enter this establishment or I cannot take this home. And the woman was right. She said, receive it. When she received it, she was taking this into her. So I said, my recommendation is with your mouth and with your actions, you received it. Put up that boundary and say, you know what? I do not receive this. And she said, well, what if they ask me later on if I still have it? I don't want to hurt their feelings. I want to tell you this. I would rather hurt a person's feelings any day of the week than grieve Holy Spirit. So if he particularly is dealing with you about anything, obey him first. That's the first thing in boundaries. Obey Holy Spirit first and then deal with the rest later. Okay, so she had to say, God, I do not receive that. I repent for, repent means to turn around and go the other way. I repent for having this thing and then listen to him on what to do with this item. Personally, I wouldn't have had that in my house for one day. What she did with it, I do not know. Now, with that, that's with dealing with other people. This morning, I get to the prayer room and I talk with someone who was standing in church and someone came up to them with a perverse conversation, and it grieved her. What happens when people bring the, this ungodliness to us, and we entertain it, and we don't put our boundary up, what it does is it begins to cover us. It begins to infiltrate. And so she's like, I am so heavy with this, and I'm so embarrassed at the content. So what I told her was, is I know you want to be loving and kind, but it is a kinder thing to set up boundaries, particularly, I mean, maybe the woman didn't know any better. She may have just come out of sin. She may have just, it may be okay in her culture 
uh, her family culture to do that. I said, what you can do is you can say, um, put your hand up and just say, you know, I just can't talk about that in here. Or I, I told her, I said, you may even contact her today and said, you know, I want to tell you that I care about you. I love you. But when I'm at church, I'm really trying to focus on the Lord. And when you talked about X, Y, Z, I was really uncomfortable. So I don't want to talk about that anymore. Is it going to hurt their feelings? Yes, it might. But to be a little crude, if someone has a boogie on their nose, it is kind, even if it hurts their feelings or embarrasses them, to tell them that they have that there. If somebody's pants are unzipped, it's kind to be able to communicate before they go out in front of a bunch of people, that that's done. So if someone doesn't know any better than to be talking about crude things, it's important that if you love them to set up that boundary. Now, if they continue to cross that boundary and say um, things that they should not, you may even have to set up an even better guard, or you may have to be more verbal. I know Pastor Clint was telling me just that someone had walked up to him before service with a crude joke, and he said, wait a minute, wait just a minute. I I can't listen to this, and this should not be said in the house of God. Actually, a believer shouldn't be saying this, and they went on to explain himself, and he's like, I'm not going to talk about that anymore. See, we think that that's unkind while we allow people to put garbage on us. It's not unkind to set up your guard and set up your boundary of what's appropriate and inappropriate. You want to have boundaries with yourself. You want to have boundaries with people. You want to have a wall that sin cannot penetrate, but you want to have no boundaries with God. It's going to take some character building to be able to put your boundaries up. Okay. The first time that someone came up to me and was, was talking bad about their husband, I did not want to say, I can't listen to this. You know what I just did? I was like, I just turned around and I walked off. (laughs) They got the hint. Later on, I could say, I didn't want to leave the conversation, but I could say, I just can't talk about this. This is a subject I can't talk about. Then later on, I also discovered that I could flip the conversation by saying something good about my husband. I could redirect it. So there are going to be times you can set up a boundary by walking away. You can set up a boundary by putting up your hand and saying no. And you can set up a boundary by redirecting the conversation. I have found that the times I need to say no is usually the times that I'm not um, putting up the boundary, but reinforcing it. I told you once, I told you twice, I am not going to talk about perversion. I'm not going to listen to your coarse joke. I am not you know, and somebody flirts with me, you know, you may think that doesn't happen. I'm a grandma, but that happens sometimes. And I'm thinking, you just flirted with the wrong person. This guy told me, told me, um, he said something about, uh, could I have your number? And I said, I'd like to ask my husband if that'd be acceptable. Was that rude? I, you know what? He was asking a married woman for her number in a perverse way. If the stronger the, um, the assault against my boundary, I'm probably going to come out that way. So anyway, don't y'all be flirting with me because I'll put you in your place. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's talk about not having any boundaries with God. 